Hello friends, hope you are having a fantastic day today. So once again, we are going to do an awesome lead code problem. And trust me, this is an awesome lead code problem. So without any delay, let's get started. So now we are going to solve the lead code problem called car fleet. Now personally, this is one of my favorite problems. And we can see that this one is a lead code medium problem and also decently well like problem. The thing is, this is a very long description for this problem because it covers a lot of edge cases and a lot of conditions that you have to understand. If you want, be my guest and read the whole description. If not, let me just point out few important topics and then we will try to understand what the problem is asking us to do through an example that would make things much more simpler. So first thing is we are being told that there are N cars going in the same destination along one lane road. So it's a single lane road and we are told that the cars are not going to be overtaking each other. This is not fast and furious. This is lead code. Okay. Then we are also given a target miles that we need to reach. That is the final destination for our cars. Now we are given two integer arrays. First one is position and second one is called speed. So position defines that what is the starting position for any particular given car compared to that target distance okay and the speed is at what speed that particular car is running on so we are given both the values inside the car now we are being told that cars are not going to overtake each other but if they are close enough we can consider them arriving at the destination at the same time and any car arriving at the destination or set of cars arriving at the destination would be considered as car fleet and now we need to consider that how many number of different car fleets actually arrive to the destination. So I know that this was quite complicated and very extensive description. Let's try to make it simpler using some example. So over here we are given a target value of 12 that we need to reach and we are given the positions and we are also given the speeds of subsequent cars. So here I have actually plotted a graph or a number sequence where this 12 is the target that every single car is trying to reach now this c1 c2 these represents different cars and we can see that based on their positions inside the subsequent array i have already plotted them on this given line so this defines their starting position and subsequently this portion defines that what is the speed that is given to every single car okay and we are being told that the distance we are trying to cover is 12 miles and the speeds are given in per hour basis so which means this car c2 actually travels four miles in one hour okay so now we need to understand that how we define car fleets so let's try to understand it one by one so we will try to go over that how every single car is actually going to reach to the final destination. And we know for sure that no car is going to overtake one other. So if one car comes closer to the other car, we would consider both of them reaching to the destination at the same time and they would be part of one single fleet. So first let's see. So currently this car C1 is located at position number 10 and its given speed is 2 miles per hour. We know that this C1 has to be the first car to reach to the destination because it is the closest car to the destination. So the, in the first hour, this car is actually going to reach to the destination and it's going to take one hour. But during this one hour period, because how do we come up with this one hour? Because we calculated the distance from the current position to the final destination we are trying to reach, which is two miles and its speed is also two miles. So we can easily, easily calculate the time uh, that it takes to reach to the destination. Now for this C2 also subsequently, this C2 would also reach to the destination in just one hour. So based on this, we can conclude that both of the C1 and C2 are actually going to reach to the destination around the same time around at one hour mark, which means C1 would be here and C2 would be right very close to it. So these two cars are going to reach to the destination in around the same time, which means this is going to be one of the fleet that is going to arrive into the destination. So now we already took care of one fleet. So let's just get rid of these. Okay. And also, Let's try to understand that we have already spent one hour. So during this one hour, what would be the position of all of these cars? So during one hour, the C4 would have traveled one kilometer. So C4 would be here. 
same way this c5 would have also kilometer con completed three kilometers because its speed is three so after this one hour this c5's position should have been at position number six but at position number six we can clearly see that c4 is already present which means after one hour the position is going to look something like this where c4 and c5 are going to be right close to each other now remember that the speed of the c4 is one and speed of the c5 is three but because c4 is ahead compared to c5 even though it has higher speed it is not going to overtake it and it is only going to reach to the destination when the c4 arrives but essentially both of these cars are also going to reach to the destination in around the same time and how much time will it take well currently this one is at position number six so it is going to take six more hours and we already spent one hours which means this c4 is going to take seven hours to reach to the destination and because c5 is behind that and it is able to catch up to the c4 it is also com going to complete and reach to the destination in seven hours so after seven hours the second fleet that would have reached to the destination would be the cars uh, that we just saw that is the car c4 and also c5 so they both will also reach to the destination in around the same time so this would be our second fleet that is going to reach to the destination and now we already spent seven hours which means after seven hours this c3 would have been uh, around here because its speed is just one miles per hour so it would have covered the distance of seven miles and then still it would have five more miles to go which means it would still take uh, like around 12 hours to reach to the destination and in the end the c3 car would be the very final car that would reach to the destination and still this would also be considered a fleet in its own so over here we can see that actually we are getting one two and three fleets reaching to the destination so for this given input we need to return three as the answer and this is the whole problem statement now I know understanding this problem statement take, took us a lot of time because there were a lot of moving parts and moving cars that we had to understand but honestly this is an awesome lead code problem because if any interviewer dares to give you this problem this is not very difficult to solve but it's very uh, peculiar for interviewer to explain also you will have to navigate through a lot of different edge cases and then think about coming up with the optimal solution so now I'm not even going to be bothered to show you the brute force approach because that would be an insta insult to this beautiful problem so let's talk about the actual complete optimal solution that we can use in order to solve this problem and in order to generate the optimal solution we need to make some assumptions and we, we need to do some calculations so what are some of the calculations we need to do number one thing that is most important is that for any particular car we will have to understand that how much time it takes to reach to the end that is number one thing and second thing is cars can only reach to the target based on the current sequence locations they are present in so even though if we see the car numbers over here this c1 and c2 are based are located at the correct space but the c3 is actually going to even though if this is the third car this would this has to be the last car to reach to the end so number one thing we are going to do is we will try to find that how much time does it take for any single car to reach to the end we will try to store this information with the cars so we actually have a couple of ways to store this we can either store it using a hash map uh, that would only make things more com complicated because we don't need like a constant time access to that data and same thing can be achieved using a two dimensional array as well so we will try to use it uh, store it using two dimensional array okay so in the two dimensional array we are going to store the information for a subsequent car and how much time does it take to reach to the end that is number one thing number two thing we are going to do is that we will actually sort these cars based on their positions so number one car in that is going to reach to the destination is going to be the car that is closest to the destination position so based on the position size we are also going to sort them and once we have that we would be able to identify the answer quite easily so now first let's try to understand that how do we actually calculate how much time does it take for any single car to reach to the destination and that is a very simple calculation 
all we need to do is we need to calculate the distance between the current position and the destination position and whatever this distance is we need to divide the speed by that distance and that would give us the time on uh, that it that that particular car would take to reach to the final destination okay so now the idea is quite simple so let's just do that so for c1 currently we can see that this is located at position number 10 and it needs to reach to the position position number 12 which means the distance is 2 and the speed for c1 is also 2 miles per hour which means it is going to take one hour for c to reach to the destination same way for c2 it is also going to take one hour to reach to the destination same way for the c4 it is actually going to take seven hours to reach to the destination because the difference between five and twelve is seven and the speed of c4 is one miles per hour same way for the c5 the dist uh, the distance is also going to be three um, nine kilometers uh, sorry nine miles and then the speed is three so it is only going to take three hours to reach to the destination and last one is the c3 car so for c3 it's actually going to take 12 hours to reach to the destination now we have our this list ready now let's try to sort this given list based on the position of the cars which means once again c1 is at the correct position and c2 is also at the correct position both times are one hour and one hour then we have the car c4 and c5 so for the car c4 it is uh, it is going to reach into the seven hour mark and car c5 should reach in three hour marks if there were no cars ahead of it and the last one is the c0 car or uh, i think c3 car so c3 car is going to take 12 hours to reach to the destination okay so let's quickly do a, re -back, a recap what we did we found out how much time does it take to reach to the destination then we sorted all of these cars based on the position where they are compared to the start the, to the target location so the higher the position the first it is going to be inside our l list and in order to store this information we are going to be using a 2d array now after having this information it becomes very easy for us to solve this problem because all we need to do is we simply have to check because we know for sure that this has to be the first car to reach to the destination at any given moment we realize that the speed of this is actually lesser or equal to the speed of its subsequent car then we can conclude that both of these cars would reach to uh, at the same time let me rephrase i use the word speed but the the correct word should have been time so if the time it takes for the c1 car to reach to the destination is one hour and we see that for C2, the time it takes is also one hour, which means C1 and C2 both are going to reach to the destination around the same time, just in a scenario where C2 is just behind C1. So we can conclude that these two has to be one single fleet. So this becomes our one of the fleets. Now in the second scenario, we have the time it takes for C4 to reach to the, to the destination as seven hours and the time it takes for c5 to reach at the destination at three hours which means c5 actually is much faster than c4 so eventually c5 would be close enough or just behind c4 before c4 actually reached to the destination let's try to once again understand using this plot because after the very first hour actually c5 and c4 would both be at the same place and how do we find out because we can see that the time it takes for both of them to reach to the destination so these two also has to be part of a simple fleet now say this last for the c3 instead of this being 12 maybe this also took three hours to reach to the destination then c3 would have also been part of this fleet because c3 would reach to the destination three in three hours c5 would reach in three hours and c c4 is going to block both of them and cause both of these cars to reach at seven hour mark because c4 is ahead compared to c5 and c3 so this would have been part of this fleet as well but in this scenario because the time c3 takes to reach to the destination is actually greater then the previous fleet the largest value in the previous fleet 
then we can conclude that this C3 is not going to be able to catch up to the C4 and C5 fleet. So this is going to be our second fleet. And in the end, the C3 is going to be our third fleet. So that's all you need to do to solve this problem. Once we do have the comp the sorted version of subsequent cars with the time it takes to reach to the destination, we can actually very easily compute because for every single fleet, all we need to check is that what is the longest time it takes uh, for those fleet to reach to the destination. So in this case, for the C4 and C5, it's gonna take seven hours to reach to the destination. So if this number would have been anything less than seven, then it would have been part of this uh, C4 fleet. But because it's not less than seven, so this has to be a fleet on its own. And uh, that's it. That's what we need to do. And this is the whole solution. So now you see how beautiful this problem is and how awesome the solution is. Like that's why this is really one of my favorite questions because it's a combination of math and data structures. And then how do you make things more efficiently and how can you think about uh, different scenarios and different mathematical equ equations and stuff like that. Okay. So now let's try to understand the time complexity. It is going to be big O of N because we are going to be simply iterating over the given input array bunch of times, but still it is going to be big O of N, but you forgot one critical thing that is we will also have to do the sorting operation. And that is actually going to cause our time complexity to be big O of N log N. And if we see space complexity, well, for the space complexity is actually going to be big O of N square because we are using a 2D array to store the information of the cars uh, to its subsequent time it takes to reach to the destination. Overall, this is also a very good time and space complexity. Now, let me know in the comments if you want, also want to see a solution using a monotonic stack because this is pretty popular problem for that. So if you want, I can also show a solution with that. But I think this is a good enough solution for your interview. Your interviewer is going to be more than happy. And now let's just quickly see the coding for this one. So the coding solution is quite simple. First of all, we create an integer n uh, to store the length of the given input array. And then we initialize our 2D array that we talked about where we are going to store the information about cars and its subsequent time it takes to reach to the end. Then we are simply going to iterate over the given input array and we are going to populate our cars double 2D array that we just created where we are going to mark the positions of the car and also we are going to calculate that how much time does any single car takes to reach to the destination. Then we are going to do the most important operation where we are going to sort the given cars based on the current positions of the given cars. Once we have that, now it is very convenient to solve this problem. We are going to initialize a counter zero that this is going to calculate the fleet uh, on what time it is going to arrive. And then we are going to have another variable where it is going to keep track that what was the previous time for the car to reach to the end. Then we are simply going to iterate over the given input uh, 2D array cars. And we are going to check that if the value of the, any particular given car is actually greater than the previous time, which means that is a new fleet being created. So we are simply going to uh, create a new fleet or add the value to the counter. And also we are also going to mark the previous time of the last car that just came in. And that's it. In the end, we can simply return this counter that we have created that was keeping track of all every single fleet. And now let's try to run this code. Okay, seems like our solution is working as expected. Let's submit this code. And our code runs decently efficiently in terms of time complexity, extremely efficiently in terms of space complexity. And once again, the code is present inside our GitHub repository. So you can go and check it out from there. Thank you.